Should we switch the light? Did you? Oh yeah, I'll turn it off. Just one. Just one. Hi everyone. Oh, that's right in front of us, isn't it? <laughs> Move it over a little bit. Hi everyone. Early Shabbat Shalom. There's a lot going on. There sure is. <laughs> at the house today as we prepare for Shabbat. In fact, I'll move more things. Just a little pinch out of the way. How is everyone tonight, this afternoon? How are you as we move into tonight? Hi, Heather. So, Barry, how's things? Things are great. Things are um, picking up a little bit, but uh, in so many ways, and so many other ways, it's been uh, a very, very, very rough week. It has. True. Absolutely. It's been it's been a tough week, but it's um, fortunately we have um, Shabbat. And fortunately, no matter what happens during the whole week, we still can be ourselves and we can do everything and think about the entire week. But we still have to take a pause, as you say, Debbie, for Shabbat. How about you? How are you doing? Well, you know, like everyone, this has been a really, really rugged week. And we recognize that part of what we're doing in this world is being here um, to perform tikkun olam, reparation of the world. But this week it has felt uh, particularly negative, scary, and um, sometimes it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so... Of course, we've looked to all kinds of things that we have laid out here in hopes that we could share a little bit of these objects, readings. You know, you just want to put your hands on everything because this is not the first time that um, we've all had to not only persevere, but make repairs, get creative and reflect. And I think that's kind of the place we are. We really are. Um... And I know you have a lot to talk about. So what, get started with all this. There's a lot of stuff on the counter. There's a lot of stuff like, on the counter. Lot. Hi, Connie. Hi, Mindy. Connie, I miss you. I haven't seen you in so long by now. Okay. One thing that gives me great comfort because, you know, I know each of us is having a pretty good amount of suffering in our hearts because we strive to live in a world of peace where our neighbors are okay and we are okay and our neighbors are not okay. So I found this quote, a religious man is a person who holds God and man in one thought at a time, at all times, who suffers harm done to others, whose greatest passion is compassion, whose greatest strength is love and defiance of despair. And that was said by Abraham Joshua Heschel. My favorite part in this quote is who suffers harm done to others, that you also suffer that same harm done to others. And I know that's the way I feel this week. And I know many, many, many of us like happening to us and right in our own chest because it is. And so I wanted to pull out uh, a few, a few things. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi Gershon. Wanted to pull out a few things that... I hope to bring me comfort during this meaningful time of rest. And then there's this parallel that's been drawn. So go with me. I, and I know some of you are going to go, woo, 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 woo. I know I'm prepared. It's okay. Okay. So what I have here in the world of crystals is called a grid. It's this really beautiful circle, but it doesn't have to be a grid. And if you're saying to yourself, that's not Jewish. Oh, yes, it is, because God introduced us to grids in the Torah. Think of Aaron's breastplate. Think of the Seder plate. Those are all grids, you all. So this is my grid for today. And what's special about this grid is it's black obsidian. And obsidian is in many ways a neutralizer. In obsidian literally sucks down negative and I've been looking at this stunning stunning black crystal this is just hand carved crystal and then you polish it it's not glass and I've been thinking how my black counterparts that my friends uh, the black community how they're absorbing far more than their share 
of negativity, just like this obsidian, and I want to send it away. So I want to play with a grid that where not only am I thinking that, and that's my prayer, but I'm really working on it. Like it's really my intention. Shabbat Shalom, Dr. Cutler. So what did I find? A beautiful uh, rose quartz heart. Rose quartz is the ultimate love stone. I bet you, even if you look at it up close, you're saying to yourself, ah, so softening, isn't it? It's just kind of, huh, makes you take a little sigh and feel so good. I'm putting this right in the heart of my grid. I'm not positive you can see it. I may have to move stuff around. Let's see. Is there enough stuff here? There's too much stuff. Okay, move the kiddush cup. There's a lot of things. <laughs> there's a lot of ways to have meaning uh, during Shabbat that's really lovely and feels very good. Okay, so now I'm taking this black obsidian grid. And I want to send things away from it because I think my friends have had enough and I know I have had enough. I'm going to use these crystal points to send love out and around. So here they go. And this is like a really quick grid. I could get really fancy. I know many of you have all kinds of stones at home. I've given a few away. I know several of you are crystal collectors. And uh, Excuse me, Debbie. Some of those have points. Like, look at this guy. See, it has a point. It that's doesn't a, mean anything. Well, that's polished and cut. And I like to do that to send energy two ways. That's actually, that's a, a double-sided right there. So it has it like that. Wow. Yeah, technical words. And this is just actually amethyst. And it has a small point. But again, I'm trying to send this love. I'm trying to send this intention, this prayer of well-being and love out to anyone who's hurting in our community. So I want something concrete for me. I want a grid that really focuses on that love, all that heart love. Because as Abraham Joshua Heschel says, God and man holding in your heart one thought at a time, at all times, who suffers harm done to others, whose greatest passion is compassion, whose greatest strength is love and defiance of despair. So that's my, that's my intention, my concrete intention. A couple more is I have a couple of really dark black stones. Again, I work with a lot of black stones when I want to absorb some tough negative things going on, even if it just helps shape my thoughts or give them a little bit more clarity or take me um, to a more productive place. Um, and then I bet you most of you have this too, right? This is a really old Hamsa. It's been in my family for a very long time. Of course, it's from Israel and has much Hebrew around the edges, beautiful things. And it hangs by my bed, in fact, very close to my head. I bet many of you have that. Then there's this other thing you can do, hit bow to do. You know, you go outside and you say, God, why is all this going on? Or whatever springs from your heart, you just unabashedly pray very out loud and sometimes when you do that or when you take that walk and you open your heart and you say i'm letting the grocery list fall away and i'm letting who i need to invoice fall away all those business things let it fall away and just take in nature mindfully and sometimes you get super lucky so these are some of my feathers i've been finding this week on my walk which shouldn't even be this way you know, because I'm walking in my residential neighborhood. But this week I've gotten so lucky. I've been in the middle of trying to just send love out from my heart. And so I've gotten a lot of blue jay feathers, which is fairly exciting. And then, um, Barry, I wanted you to start your stuff because I was actually going to look up for you obsidian because... This will say it a little better than I could, and I'll come back with this when you're done. Well, excuse me. You couldn't ask me. Maybe I know the definition. Ah, go. What, do you, think, what do you think of obsidian? I couldn't begin to tell you. Okay, but um, I can mention this. Uh, last week, I don't know if you remember, but last week we had a tour portion, and it was NASO. Longest tour portion in the, in the Torah, as it turns out. Well, this week's tour portion is none other than... NASO. Why, why in the world? Do you have any idea why NASO would be twice, two weeks in a row? Because we need to review it again? Well, that could be some people, and that's how I was in eighth grade, or, in, <laughs> or, or, maybe, or maybe in uh in, um You'll be Sunday needing school. some of this. <laughs> yeah. But the real reason <laughs> is because uh, Shavuot, the previous holiday we had when we received the Torah, 
it's eight days in America, but it's seven days in Israel. So last week we had Nassau and they had the second day of Shavuot, or many people in, in the country had uh, the second day of Shavuot. So this week is Nassau too. The second thing I was going to mention about Nassau is it's a, it begins with taking a census. And it's not like, oh, everyone's been on field trips where you take a census, so you're getting off the bus and you do count, count one, two, three, and count, making certain the census is correct. But this is two million people, two million people they're, they're trying to count. But they're not necessarily counting them as Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, he refers to it as being lifting their heads. Hmm. Because these are the, the Levites are instructed to count all the people. But they, this other rabbi, Rabbi Tali Schumann, she describes it this way, and this will not be long. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs notes that the choice of language and instruction illustrates a revolutionary idea that each person should be seen as an individual, human, single, and valued, and not just a part of a mass or a number in a tally. The census reveals a supreme religious principle that people are not just numbers. In this priestly act of lifting each head, looking each individual in the eye, and counting their personhood, among the Israelites, we learn that we are as important as we make others, other people feel. That by acknowledging one's humanness, we inherently acknowledge both their independence and our interconnectedness. Wow. wow. How timely. I know. Wow. So that's, that's Torah for the day. It's Debbie, beautiful. go ahead. Beautiful. That is beautiful. It's pretty amazing. Can I borrow your glasses a second? Sure. For this little bitty writing. Let's see. I was going to tell you about obsidian. Brings up negativity, but does so, so slowly that it can be transmuted. Um, they talk about an Apache tear, which this little piece is an Apache tear. I've collected those since I was a little girl. It's an excellent for absorbing negative energy and for protecting your aura, grounds and cleanses the earth. Apache tear is named so because it is believed to shed tears in times of sorrow. It comforts grief, provides insight into the source of distress, and relieves long-held grievances. This stone stimulates analytical capabilities and promotes forgiveness. Oh, beautiful. So if you're looking for a wonderful stone for this time period, they're very little, pretty inexpensive. Most of the stores have them, an Apache tier. And if you'll let me do one last paragraph, I know it's wordy. Excuse me, can I move oh. this forward so they oh, can, yeah. uh, can it's, see it's the It's actually kind of cool. Yeah. We have grids around yeah. the house. They're everywhere. Okay, I wanted to read all of us something for this Shabbat, and I'm reading to you out of Encounters with the Ten Commandments, wonderful book, which we got this week, and we've really torn it apart. We've just loved it. We mark in all our books. Everybody that knows me knows too many sticky notes in them all. The Torah's promise of Shabbat is a subversive revolution reminding us that as important as work is in our lives, rest is a highest aim. Rest does not merely mean fun but meaningful leisure. Our character can be assessed by how we choose to use our free time. Does it elevate those around us? Does it give us more energy, ideas, and positivity? Does it bring repair to, bo to brokenness? Sadly, many only work to survive. Ideally, every individual would be able to pursue their passions and actualize their unique talents through their work. I truly dream that this is not an impractical ideal, a reality for only the privileged, but that labor can be a vehicle for us all to perfect our souls and the world. Huh. Huh. It is important that we encourage everyone to experiment with various types of work. We must encourage the upcoming generations to seek out new professional experiences so as to find what they are truly passionate about. And it is imperative that we work to create a more just world where all people can have the ability to seek out the work that best suits them and not merely be forced into a lifetime of unchosen, monotonous labor. Achad Ha'am. 
was correct when he wrote, More than the Jews have kept the Sabbath, the Sabbath have kept the Jews. But Shabbat is not only about ensuring Jewish continuity in a survivalist sense, it is also about keeping Jews on our singular moral mission, the mandate to honor the dignity of all people. Amazing. Hey, what book is that? It's the one we got this week. Inscribed Encounters with the Ten Commandments. The editor is Rabbi Oren J. Hayan. It is fabulous. It goes through all of the commandments and it's relevant. Well, the commandments are always relevant, but um, it, it just feels like it was written yesterday and it's just calling to me. Well, I think this is a good plug for Oren's book. He used to be the rabbi at Temple Emmanuel. He's a terrific guy and uh, I really like him. And then maybe while well, we got the book. Yes, I think and, it is. And there's a couple of forwards. Maybe and, Rabbi Stern mentioned maybe, it at Talmud right, last maybe week. Maybe he, he has a forward in it by Rabbi Stern. <laughs> so, maybe. Well, that's a good plug for their book. And but, you know why tonight's so exciting? Actually, it's cool. Rabbi Robbins is back. So you know what that means. Rabbi Stern said, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on vacation. It's all yours now. So that's great for <laughs> That's great for everyone. So maybe we'll see you all streaming this evening. Maybe we'll all take each other in as we light our candles and the world might settle a little bit. And maybe we'll hold a stone to soften our hearts or hold each other, which would be even better, right? Mm -hmm. Much love, everyone, as the sun sets and we all have meaningful and very well-deserved rest. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Oh, it's way over there if you can get it.